Today on Rightly Dividing is part two of three on the topic of judging. Is it biblical in the life of a believer? Thank you for joining us. Learning to navigate truth in a world of opinions. Teacher Jacob Leger and your host, Pastor Daniel Wright. Heart of Worship Church Media presents Rightly Dividing. So if we can't truly judge, then how is it possible that we can evangelize? You can't do it effectively. Mm-mm. You cannot win souls. If, if it is, if people that say you can't judge, if they are correct, then we cannot evangelize the world. It's impossible because mm-hmm. we're making a judgment call right then and there and telling them that they're living in sin, they're sinners, and they need to repent. Right. Exactly. That's so true. to the non-Christian. No good parent. And the reason we're saying this is because you might say, well, I don't believe in God. So therefore, what's the point about evangelism? I don't get it. So I'm going to cast the seed to your to your side of the fence. No good parent allows their children to destroy their lives with bad choices, but will lovingly intervene with wisdom. That's a judgment call. It's a judgment call. Any good parent, whether you're atheist, whether you're a Christian, whether you're agnostic, if you love your children, you will intervene in their life in any way that you can to help them escape from destructive decisions. That's right. You'll examine the fruit of their life. Exactly. And because you're concerned about it, you want to intervene and help them right? out of love. See, it's love that drives us to make judgment calls. See, one of the offices of, of the New Testament is the teacher. And there's no way you can teach without making judgments. Right. You have to examine the fruit of your students and make those judgment calls on how they're doing. You have to correct and direct and lead. This is the main function of the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent him to be a teacher. Correct. So there will be judgments that will be made by him and through him, through his servants. That's good. That's good. It has to. And uh, to, to give you guys one of my favorite. I love this one. Galatians 6.1. I, I firmly believe that Galatians six one really kind of nips it in the bud as far as whether or not it's biblical to judge. It says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Now that's key, humility. Considering yourself, lest thou also be tempted. Mm-hmm. And I want to go back to the, the main phrase, the target of that, that verse is, ye which are spiritual, you're Christians, right. you're born again, restore such an one who has fallen away, overtaken in a fault, in the spirit of meekness. And then also considering yourself, the reason you're humble is because you know that either you can fall too or you have fallen before. Yep, you've been through it. The point of restoring such a one is reaching out and saying, hey, you're not where you need to be, but by golly, praise God, you can through his mercy and grace and we can repent. Amen. 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 One of the big problems, I think, with uh, people comprehending this topic is that they really don't comprehend righteousness. Mm. They think of it as this abstract thing that is so far away and unattainable and divine. But really, righteousness broken down to the simplicity of what it is, is doing what God says is right. Um, the Bible is full of thank promises to the righteous. It says that you know, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. Um, it talks about how his ears are open to the cry of the righteous. It talks about how the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. So we can obtain righteousness. We have that opportunity because of what Jesus did for us. But righteousness is simply doing what God says is right. That's good. By the blood of Jesus, we are cleansed and able to receive his spirit, which then leads, speaks, guides, directs, and empowers us to do what he says is right. Mm. He's given us the ability to do that. Now, if you do what you think is right, Mm. then that's self-righteousness. Right. So understanding what righteousness and self-righteousness is, we can see that many times sinners will accuse the righteous of being self-righteous when in actuality they're being self-righteous by standing on what they think is right (laughs) in opposition (laughs) to what God has said is right. Come on. That's good. So we have to come back to the reality that we have to humble and submit ourselves before God and do what he says is right. That's it. And if he says it's right, then we're not really the ones judging. We're just relaying his righteous judgments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why the Bible says judge righteously. Don't judge by what you think is right. 
judge by yes. what he has said is right. It's almost, I have a mental picture right now of say the, the, the post lady comes to drop off the mail. And in that mail, there's a past due notice and a disconnection notice pay in 30 days or you lose your electricity. And then the person gets mad at the mailman. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Uh, don't shoot the messenger. That's right. right. It's just, so when we, we as messengers, we are messengers of Jesus. We carry His light. It. The whole point is to deliver the word. What do you think, Pastor? I, I preach sermons, and people are like, "Well, Pastor, that really spoke to me." I mean, sure, there's a corporate word, but what's wrong with the individual? If, if it's okay to the corporate, then you have to have an individual conversation. Right. right. Well, Jesus basically says the same thing that we're saying right now. When he was here on the earth, he even said, when I'm speaking to you, I'm not judging you. Mm. But if you look in John chapter 12, verse 47, I'll read you the words that he says. But to sum it up, he's basically saying the words that I'm speaking, those words will judge you on the final day because they're not mine. They're the father's. So when you deliver something that is from God, from his heart or from his word, it's really not you judging. It's you loving enough to deliver the judgment that's already been given. This world has already been judged. Right. We've just been given space for repentance to get into alignment with the judgment that's already given. That's right. And mm-hmm. if somebody loves you enough to tell you what that judgment is, then you ought to appreciate it and you ought to humble to it. Jesus said this in John chapter 12, verse 47. If any man hear my words and believe not, It's not me that judges him, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words has one that will judge him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So in other words, the red lettered words of Jesus written in the New Testament of the Bible, that's what your life will be judged against. He says, for I have not spoken of myself. But the father which sent me, he gave me commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the father said unto me, so I speak. Mm, That's good. That is good. So this is very, very important. Jesus is literally telling us that on the final day, the words that he spoke that are written in the Bible will be what judges us. So we're going to go, we're going to stand before the courts of heaven. The books will be opened. And it says that our life will be judged by the fruit. Does our life line up with the word of God, with the teachings of Jesus, with what he said, not with our opinions or with our own self-righteousness or what we thought was right Right. or what we learned off of Facebook meme Christianity. (laughs) There you go. But what did the word say? And if our life lined up with it, then the fruit of our life will prove that we had faith in what he taught us. Right. He gives us the grace when we have the faith to do the work, to be obedient to the word. I like what you said about the social media Christianity. <laughs> There's so many, so many things to address with that. It's a sad state when we have a whole generation of believers today that can quote the words of biblically incorrect and theologically incorrect songs, mm. but they can't quote the scripture or they can repeat the memes or the, the themes that right. they've heard right. preached but they don't know what the word itself really says. And that's that's what's going to judge them. This Mm -hmm. is what, it doesn't matter what your preacher said or what your friend said. That's good. What did Jesus say? Because that's that's what's going to judge you on the final day. In Revelations chapter 20, verse 12, we get a little bit of a glimpse of that very event when it says, and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according, according to, to their, their works. works. I love it. I feel like we could tell us <laughs> together. <laughs> we will be judged. I was like, come on, works. Jacob, join me. I didn't want to do that by myself. <laughs> we are not saved by works. That's right. But we will be judged by our works. That's good. Because the works are the evidence of the faith. We're saved by faith, which is right. where it starts. Right. But if we truly have faith, it will produce works, which right. is where it ends. Right. So by judging the fruit or the works, it proves whether or not we had the faith or the root. Right. Well, and that's a very good point about fruit and using that sticking with that uh, illustration yeah. as the Bible does all throughout right. uh, as far back as Psalms, when oh, it talks yeah. about us as being trees planted by streams of living water, Jesus gave parables about the tree that doesn't produce good fruit. The fig tree, he cursed it because it didn't produce fruit. 
Right. It was, he said, you, it's honed down and cast into the fire. And mm-hmm. if we are Christians as trees, and he even said, uh, it, uh, how can a good tree produce bad fruit? How can a bad tree produce good fruit? You're known by the fruit. Right. You could, you, uh, you could say all day long, I'm a tree, I'm a tree, I'm a tree. Well, the question is great, but what's on your branch? That's it. That's, that's it. That's the word. Again, this is, this goes back to what we're rightly dividing is all about. We can have opinions. We can quote social media quote, uh, Christianity quotes. Mm-hmm. We can sing the Christian songs. But in the end, do you know the word of God? Right. And as my wife likes to say, and I agree, do you know the God of the word? Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Amen. Because he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's right. That's right. It's hard to know him and not love him. Right. So the question is, is do we really know him or do we just think that we know about him, but really know another Jesus as Paul warned many of the churches in yeah. his day. But then, John chapter seven, verse 24, it's very short, but it's good to remember. It's a commandment in the new Testament. I mean, yes, there are commandments given in the new Testament. If God says it, it's, sure. it's a commandment. I right. mean, if God says it, it's the law. <laughs> so exactly. He is the judge. So whatever he says, <laughs> right. is the he's law. not limited to Exodus chapter 20. Right. right. It's like, okay, you know, God, you already give us the law. You know, <laughs> right, right. we're good. No. Right. I love when people tell me, you know, that, oh, we're not under the law anymore. And I'm like, He's the judge. We got to go well, before the court. Well, not only that, it, these people that are Christian to that point, right. that Jesus said, I'm raising the bar. Now, exactly. paraphrase, of course, because right. he said not only about uh, committing adultery, but if you look after a woman with less, you've committed. Right. So when it, those people that are talking about the law, it's like, wait a second, if we're on the New Testament side, homie, New Testament made it worse. Right. And actually, according to scripture, if you're still in sin, then you actually are still under the law because you haven't been redeemed from it. You haven't repented and come to the blood of Jesus. and, and been So the law still exists for those who are not yet saved. Right. Exactly. The, the Old Testament law. Now, for those who have been redeemed, there are new covenants and new there are new com, uh, conditions, and there are still uh, laws under the sure. law of sin of of the law of Christ. Um, there's new laws. Well, and, and even still, of course, uh, the Ten Commandments does apply for us. Sure, right. with, moral law. The moral right. law still, still which applies. is why it's so important to know the judgments of God, mm-hmm. because we still will be judged right. by those for those moral laws. I mean, which of the Ten Commandments can you break? And it's okay. Is it okay to murder now? Is it nope. okay to steal? Is nope. it okay to commit mm-hmm. adultery? No, but I'm under the blood. I've been saved. See, <laughs> well, we forget the part about the woman caught in adultery. We love that one. But again, back to the full context, we like to roll the credits right before Jesus says, go and sin no more. Right. Uh-huh. Which leads us really into a very important point. The very reasons that uh, we are to give these judgments, they're not ours. Of right. course, the scripture Making says a judgment call. that we don't judge according to appearance or what it looks like, but we bring righteous judgments, which is what God says is right, because we know that people will be judged Correct. on which the is- final day for these sins. Amen. As we read about in uh, Ezekiel. Yep. So God has called us to be watchmen. And Ezekiel 3.16 states this. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. Come on now. So if you're giving a warning, you're making a judgment call on what's going on. They're doing wrong. So God called Ezekiel to be that watchman on the wall to warn the house of Israel. As we come to the close, thank you for joining us on part two of three in the series of judging. Remember, brothers and sisters, that the word of God will stand forever. Isaiah chapter 40, verse eight and first Peter one twenty five. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, share and subscribe and click that bell for notifications. Or if you're watching on or listening on a, any podcast platform, please follow us. If you have any questions, concerns or topic suggestions, please comment below or even email us at info at Heart of Worship Church. Dot com. Please join us on our next installment of the series, part three of three, as we talk about the subject of judging in the Bible. This has been Daniel Wright, Jacob Leger, and Miranda Wright, workmen that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you for joining us this episode. For more information on our ministry or to contact us, please visit heartofworshipchurch.com.